But any folks. Good evening, folks. I hope everyone's had a fantastic uh, afternoon and evening so far. Hope everyone's had a fantastic afternoon and evening so far. I hope that you can all hear me well. Hope you can all hear me well. Uh, my name is Charles Chambliss. I am the host of Let's Talk About It Now. Shout out to all my new subscribers. Shout out to you. And shout out to all of you that support this channel. You don't hear me much, guys. I'm, uh, hey, you know, I'm like you. I'm moving about, living life the way everyone else is. Things come up and get in the way of everything we're trying to do. But we keep it moving. We build it as we fly it. That's what we do. So, again, I, I thank you for all of your support. And, uh, again, I shout out to all of my new subscribers. Had a fantastic afternoon today. Uh, you know, shout out to my cousin Fatima. Had a fantastic afternoon with her. Family get together. Salute to uh, the graduates uh, who graduated from college today. We went there to support family members who graduated from college. That's a big deal when many of us don't get to see that. Uh, for those of us that do, we need to give the support where it's grant where it's needed. So again, um, shout out to you and your accomplishments. And uh, yeah, shout out to all of you on YouTube that have uh, engaged in some of the content with your comments. Shout out to Michelle Ship. I enjoy your commentary. I, I enjoy your comments. I really do. Because uh, you engage regardless of whether we agree or disagree. I, I, I love the fact that you're willing to give your, your commentary. And uh, again, I support you as well with that. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for that kind of engagement. We don't have to always agree. Uh, we don't always have to agree. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we don't have to always agree. Um, it's never about always agreeing. It never is. It's about having the conversation. I think that's what's more important than anything else. You know, and uh, if we can learn to do that, I think that'll take us a long way in any commentary any content or any talking point that that we may have having the conversation is most important so you see the subject tonight modern women peace peace shout out to you uh i'm on Streamyard, so for those of you that are in facebook watching this stream i can't see you i can't see your name for some reason Streamyard would not show me your name but I can see that you're engaging. I see that. So peace to you, to the individual that uh, that gave me uh, peace in the comments. Shout out to you. Give me a one in the chat box, in the chat room, if you can hear me well. Give me a one in the chat room if you can hear me well. If the sound and everything is good, give me a one in the chat room. Before we get started, give me a one in the chat room. Camille Shabazz, shout out to you, my brother. <laughs> shout out to you shout out to abdul thank you put your names in the chat room that's that that'll be that'll help that'll be helpful shout out to camille shabazz shout out to abdul shout out to thomas green peace my brother one thank you thank you all right we're gonna get right into it you see the subject tonight modern women want to provide a male who can lead but refuse huh. but refuse to be led now what is uh what is the misconception shout out to queen battle shout out to you good to see you sister haven't seen you in a while glad to have you on the platform tonight what does it mean to be a provider male shout out to gail thank you for getting on the stream tonight what does it mean to be a provider male in modern in the modern time what it means for the modern woman is what you can provide financially that is entirely what it means to the modern woman to be a provider male. But in a traditional sense, what does it mean to be a provider male? 
for a woman that understands what it is to have a male that provides. It means providing wisdom. It means providing guidance. It means providing protection. If you notice, the three things I just mentioned do not require money. Yet they're the three things that go most overlooked. Most overlooked. You've heard me say in previous streams that that loud knock in the middle of the night, that loud bang in the middle of the night when you're sleeping and you're at rest, right? If it happens, what's expected naturally? It's expected that the man will go to see what the source of that loud banging is, right? And he may, out of trying to protect his his wife, he may tell her, baby, uh, close the bedroom door. Stay here. Don't leave the bedroom. And he is, in turn, what he's going to do? He's going to get on the front line to protect his house. He's going he's gonna to get on the front line to protect his home. He's volunteering to potentially lose his life in protecting his house and in protecting his wife. That's his first line of defense. What is he doing? He's providing. He is, in, in fact, to provide a meal at that point. It doesn't stop there. He has to provide guidance. Does the modern woman respect the wisdom that comes from the man that she's with? If he has something to say that in, that of guidance and of wisdom, is she willing to accept the information that's coming from him? This is a problem. This is a problem today. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If she's not willing to accept his guidance, why would she be willing to accept him in the position of defending her? I will tell you this, ladies, before you get yourself triggered by what I'm going to say next. A man cannot protect what he cannot control. Oh, I know what you're saying. I know what some of you are saying. Control. Control what? Control me? No. Control me is like saying I'm in slavery or I'm being like I'm a robot that I don't have a mind of my own. That's not what control means. Control means, in essence, that if he is to protect you... He has to be able to control not only what you what you do, but he's also in control of what you think. What do you mean in control of what I think? I just said I want I have a mind of my own. It doesn't remove the mind that you have of your own. But what it does say, if you're willing to submit to his wisdom and his guidance, it says that you that you trust him. You trust in what he's going to say to you. You trust in his guidance. If his, if his information to you, if his guidance to you is against your best interests, then in turn, it's also against his own best interests. He's fighting against himself if he tells you the wrong thing. Think about it, ladies. If he tells you the wrong thing, he's fighting against himself in the information that he's going to provide to you, right? So why would you fight against it? See, here's the funny thing about today's narrative. The funny thing about today's narrative is that you don't need a man. I don't need a man. I don't need any man to tell me what to do. I don't need a man to tell me where to go. I don't need a man to tell me how to dress. I don't need a man to tell me anything. Uh, just go to work, come home, and help me out with my financial obligations. It goes bigger than that and it goes further than that because here's the thing at the end of the day if his financial obligations are met where are you and where do you stand in terms of how much and what level of control he has over you as his wife what level of control does he have this is where this is where everything falls off the rails this is where it falls off the rails because I'm going to say this, if, if a woman wants a man who is willing to lead, and this is what most women, I will tell you, most women that, that I've watched over the internet, that I've watched over different 
podcasts and platforms and those that I've even spoken to in person, they all say the same thing. They want a man that can lead and those that can't lead, they have bad outcomes as a result. And yet many of them have given children to these same individuals, but they're looking for a man who can lead, lead you where? Here's the thing I would ask you ladies, lead you where? What do you want? Where do you want him to lead you? That's the question. What do you want him to lead you? Lead you to what? Lead you to what? Because what I'm finding today is that most women are willing to be led if it's something that they agree with, if it's something that they're interested in. But the minute it goes against the grain of what they want to do personally, or when it goes against the grain of what they're interested in, then they find themselves going against the grain. They find themselves bucking against that leadership. The leadership, the same leadership that they said they want. I'm a firm believer that the best years of most women's lives have been given to Pookie, Nug Nug, Ray Ray, Killer Mike, <laughs> Trigger Mike, so that by the time they find a man who has the fortitude, the mental fortitude to lead, he, he finds himself with the worst side of the individual. He finds himself with the worst side of what that woman has to offer in terms of her support. Support is bigger than just being there. I don't care what uh, that support is. Support is bigger than just being there. A lot of times we think that uh, a lot of times we think that support is based on well, you know, I was there. I I was I supported what they were doing. How did you support? How did you support? I'll give you an example. I'll give you some examples. If a man has a business, a brick and mortar business that he starts. There, there is a need in a brick and mortar business to have an accountant. There's a, there's a, a need in a brick and mortar business to have a person who handles the files, who takes care of the phone calls from the clients or the potential customers who may call. A woman who who's willing to step in that position, whichever position that is, be it taking the phone calls or filing the paperwork or making sure that the appointments are scheduled accurately or properly for her husband. That's support. That is support. I'm talking about throwing your whole self into what it is that your man is doing. Many of you ladies have never done that from day one. Never done that at all. I did a stream a few months back entitled you want the trophy for the race that you were unwilling to run. And I will tell you, most ladies want the trophy for the race they, do, they, they were unwilling to run. They never wanted to run the, run the race at all. And if they did attempt to run, the first cramp that they received before lapping the track, they gave up. They gave up and they sat along the sideline like a spectator watching the race yet not enduring the race until the end i made a i did an example of uh individuals who find themselves in a position of success later on in life that find themselves married they were in college and while they were in college, they were eating oodles of noodles and they were sitting in their dorm room eating potato chips with that young lady who saw the potential of this individual before he was anybody to be sp spoken of. And she rolled with him until he finished college, only to find herself married to the same individual who's now a six figure, seven figure income earner and he's doing well in life financially and she reaps the benefit of his hard work why not because she saw the success in the early years but because she saw the potential of where he was going and she got on his program she put herself second she put him first 
and she began to focus on his objective, his goal, his program. And I know many of you ladies really get stomach aches when it comes to that. I know. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. Because that is the narrative today. The narrative today is to not get on a man's program. I know. Getting on a man's program, again, it's like acid reflux. But you want a man to lead. You want a man to lead. Where is the incentive for a man to lead you? Where is the incentive for a man to lead you? And every job that we have, every every uh, profession that we have, if you're in a profession or a career or even a nine to five job, there's a thing called incentive. The incentive is what gives the employer or the person who has the career, the drive, or at least the ambition, the the uh, the the, the uh, encouragement to go further or go beyond, above and beyond what they would normally do. That's what an incentive does. Where's the incentive, ladies, that you're giving your man to reach beyond the heights of all heights? I, there was an example. There was a young man that I, found, I I came across not too long ago. He needed to get his teeth fixed. And his lady came to him. He's a content creator. I won't call his name. But he's a content creator that I'm very familiar with, that I'm also a member of his channel. His lady came to him and said, uh, you need to get your teeth fixed. You should get your teeth fixed. And he didn't he didn't give her any pushback on that. Why? Because what is she doing? She's being a help meet to him. But you would be surprised how many retarded men said, oh, you're going to get your teeth fixed for her. You know, that's an idiot. You're going to get your teeth fixed for her. See, some of you guys are really silly. You don't understand when you got to help me and you don't understand when you got somebody that's just trying to ride your curtail. You don't you don't understand the difference between the two, you know, so I'm gonna say that to some of you guys. You don't understand the difference again between a female who's actually in help meet as opposed to one who's just sitting there riding the wave to see where it goes. Yeah, because you got some women, like I said, they want to they want the trophy for the race that they were unwilling to run. And yet they want a man to lead and yet they're unwilling to be led. That is a problem. That is a problem today in modern day time. That is a major problem. Most women who are in relationships, they have a man who's simply a figurehead. He's a figurehead. He's an item on the board. He's a piece on the board. And in her mind can be removed at any given time. But there's no real respect for the piece that's on the board. Then the question comes up. Why isn't he working so hard for me? Why isn't he pushing the envelope for me? Why, is, why isn't he going above and beyond for me? Well, going above and beyond requires an incentive. Here's the question I would say to you ladies. Why aren't you going above and beyond for him? Yeah, that's the question. Why aren't you going above and beyond for him? Why do you have to be demoted? Why, is, why aren't you going above and beyond for him? Why won't you do that? Why won't you do that? Because here's the thing. If it goes both ways, if the pendulum swings in both directions, then let the pendulum swing in both directions. To whom much is given, much is required. If he's required to give it all, and I mean all, because for a man, he's required to give it all. He's not simply required to provide for you financially, but he's required potentially to give his life, his physical life, in protecting you. So to whom much is given, much is required. Ladies, I would, I would love to ask you this question for the men that you have or the man that you desire, are you willing to give it all? Are you willing to throw in yourself? 
Are you willing to give 100% of yourself while asking him to give 100 of himself? Are you one, are you the individual that wants a man to be a provider male who can lead, but yet you're unwilling to be led? Are you that individual? Because if that's you, if you're the individual who wants a man to lead and yet you're unwilling to be led, tell me how you expect that to end. How do you expect that story to end? How do you expect it to end? What results do you expect to have from a situation like that? You got men right now in relationships suffering in silence with you suffering in silence with you uh here's the thing suffering in silence how they may have children with you you may have a ready-made family and i know i'm speaking to some brother that's listening to this stream you're in a ready-made family already it's you your wife and children and yet you don't have the all the ideal situations. Many things take precedence over you. You're not number one in your house. Many of you know that. You're not number one in your house. Oh, you take the second seat, the third seat, or the fourth seat, or some seat, but you're not number one in your house. Every queen has what's called a king. Are you the king in your house? See, a lot of black women wanna be called king, queens. You know, and I will say this to you guys that love to throw that thing out there. Queen, 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 knock it off. Some of you guys are so simpy, it don't make any sense. Queen, queen, queen. First of all, you can't be a queen unless you got a king. And in today's modern day, this modern woman, she wants to be called a queen, but yet she does not have a king anywhere near her on her arm or any close proximity. And if she had a man close to her, she's not willing to give him the position of leadership so that he could be a king. Oh, yeah. This is the reality today. This is the reality today. Most women want a man who can lead, and yet they're unwilling to be led. How many times, guys, men, I'm talking to you, how many times? Have you given your lady that you're currently with an instruction? I know you ladies don't like the word instruction, but I'm gonna say it anyway, an instruction. You can, you can change it to suggestion or whatever feels comfortable, but it's, it still comes down to be an instruction. How many, guys, how many guys have given your lady an instruction to do something specific in her best interest and she's argued with you back and forth about doing the thing that you asked her to do. How many times? And over and over in that conversation, you finally give in because you don't want to cause a long-term argument. You give in and say, you know what? All right, do it the way you want to do it. This is the reality, man. This is the reality. You want a man to lead, but you're unwilling to be led. And it's the, it's, the, it's the strangest thing that goes on today. In this modern day time, this modern woman refuses to be led. Regardless, she gives her man who she's with no incentive to go any further than where he's at. If you're going to take a man where you want him to be, then at least be the woman that he wants you to be. It goes, again, like I said, the pendulum swings in both directions. It's not one-sided. It's not, it's not one-sided. But you control one thing, two things, I should say, ladies. You control access to your body and childbirth. He controls relationships. But you have something uh, that you have in your, in your power. What is it that you have in your power? The thing that you have in your power is to conserve and to preserve the relationship that you currently have. How? In a lot of different ways. I've said in so many different streams. Your job just begins the day that you get into a relationship. Your job just starts. It doesn't end with the relationship. But in this modern day time, in this modern day time, 
Women believe that their relationship and the job that's required in that relationship stops the day that they find themselves in a relationship, and that is not where it ends. You are in competition to, from the day that you get into a relationship. You are in competition, not with the man that you're with, but you're in competition with every woman that wants the man that you're with. And yet you want to be led, but yet refuse to be led. You want a man who can lead, but you refuse to be led. Lead you where? Where can a man lead the modern woman today? With the mindset that she has. Where can he lead her? With all the struggles. With all the setbacks. With all the pitfalls. With all of the, sh the uh, entanglements that a man has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Just trying to provide for the woman that he has. Falling short each time. His spirit being dumped each time. His ambition being dumped and challenged each time. Do you know what it takes for the average black man, I would say? Men in general, black men in particular. Do you understand what it takes for a black man to find himself enthusiastic and ambitious every single solitary day for you? For you. He has to remain ambitious every day. He has to remain determined every day to provide and support you and potentially, like I said, give his life to protect you. And yet, can he get you to follow and submit to anything that he says, anything that he instructs, any kind of guidance or wisdom that he imparts? Can he get you to totally and completely submit? Can he get you to do that? Oh, the modern woman wants a man who's able to lead, but she's unwilling to be led. That is what we find ourselves at. That is where we find ourselves at today. Oh yeah, that's where we find ourselves at today. This is why you hear me say in every stream to all the young soldiers that's out there who are single, man, listen, don't you get yourself locked up and entangled in no relationship. Get yourself together focus on yourself focus on getting yourself together man oh yeah get your bank account up bro don't you move in no woman's house do you understand what i said do you hear what i said don't you move into no woman's house not if you're a real man don't do it no don't you drive her car either bro get your own damn car man Get your own car, get your own car, get your own place, furnish your own place, get your own bank account, get your own stuff, man. Get your shit together, bro. Before you get into a position with a female where you start a relationship. Why? Because the odds are against you, man. The odds are against you if you don't. It's against you already. Even if you have those pieces in place, you got to fight with the narrative that's in the world today, man. The modern woman wants a man to lead, but yet she's unwilling to be led. Even if you're in a position where you are already self-sustaining, you still got to deal with the mindset. You still got to deal with the narrative that's out here, man. This is what you're fighting against. But at least don't put yourself at a full disadvantage by having yourself in a position to where you're now subservient and where you're now dependent. And I will tell you, Pookie, Nug Nug, Ray Ray, Trigger Mike, you know, Killer, Killer Mike, whatever his name is on the street. You know these names, ladies. Many of you got babies by these dudes. You know who I'm talking about. These guys, they don't have a problem with moving in your apartment. No, they don't have a problem moving in your house with you because they don't know who they are. And they don't know what their potential is. And they certainly don't know what their ambitions are because they don't have any. I said in a previous stream some months back, I talked about uh, Pookie and Nug Nug and Ray Ray, what they can offer you ladies in the modern day time. They can offer you sexual bliss and emotional distress. This is what you get from Pookie and Nug Nug and Ray Ray and Killer Mike. This is what you get. 
Those are the ones that you allow to move into your apartment with you. But when you find yourself in the presence of a quality man, because you know there's something different about this individual, you know there's something different. This is not the normal dude that you've dealt with in the past. You know this. And because you know this, you fight against the thing that's in front of you. Instead, you work to sabotage the thing that's in front of you because you don't want to see the man that you're in front of become better than you are. A lot of times, and listen, before you let yourself get triggered, we only get what we are. We don't get what we want. We get what we are, not what we want. So whoever you were, when you met the individual that you are with, that's who you got. You got the person at that time, whatever situation, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, that's what you got. You got that individual that matched you, that matched you. Here's where the problem lies though. When the individual begins to change, if in fact the individual does change for the good, because we all change. And I will tell you this, this is the only thing that's constant in the universe. Change is constant in the universe. Change is constant. Oh yeah, change is always constant. Change is the thing that never stays the same. You can't stagnate change. As a result, human beings change. Human beings change. I firmly believe that every five years, we are different than we were five years prior. Every five years, I think we change from who we were five years earlier. I believe that. So how much has your man changed over the years? Oh, I'm not talking about his imperfections because I know many of you ladies would love to highlight that but we're not talking about that. I'm talking about as an individual. Does he reflect anything that you've experienced in the past? Does he, as a person, does he reflect anything that you've experienced in the past? And if he does not, why are you not willing to let him lead? Why are you fighting against everything that he says? Why are you fighting against all the guidance that he gives? Why are you doing that? Why is it that you still find a need to have a place when it comes to decisions that are being made as opposed to giving him the full playing field to deciding and giving the wisdom and guidance that he is born to give by nature? Your nature is to help him meet his objectives. How many of you ladies have done that? How many of you ladies are even willing to do that? Give him the necessary guidance, the ne and I'm sorry, the necessary support, I should say, that he needs in what he's trying to do. I'm not talking about support from a cursory glance. I'm talking about throw your whole self into it. Your whole self. Many of you ladies are like the person standing on the side of the pool where you just dip your toe in the water just to see if the water is hot or cold, but you won't jump completely into the pool. And there, this in lies the problem. This in lies the problem. A wife, a wife is the necessary support that a man needs to go to the next level. He wants a woman again that's fit, that's friendly, that's easy to get along with, that's non-combative, non-confrontational. A woman that sees his objective and takes it on personally to herself, where his objective then becomes her objective. His goals then becomes her goals. Where he's trying to go then becomes where she's trying to go. Why? Why is that? Why should she be that? She should be that because any success that he achieves, she, she in turn will benefit from that same success. She'll benefit from it. And as a result, she will get the outcomes that she says she wants. However, here's the alternative. 
if she doesn't support him and he fails, then she also will reap the benefits of his failure. She'll reap the benefits of what he uh, failed to achieve. She'll also get those results as well. It goes both ways. Again, the pendulum swings in both directions. But your man should be your primary support. He should be the individual that you support the most. He should be the one that you get behind 100%, 1,000%. And I know what some of you are saying, well, what if he's not giving his 1,000%? Or what if he's not giving his 100%? Well, I will say this. All of us have issues. We all have issues, man. I will tell you this. We all have issues. And uh, there are many men that have never, ever known what it was to take care of a family, to take care of children. <laughs> they just, they just, they just never known. They don't know what it is to do this. Again, I told you, Pookie and Nug Nug can only offer you a few things. They can offer you sexual bliss and emotional distress. But I'm talking about the men that you say you want. When you get him, do you know what to do? With the man that you get, do you know what to do? I will, I will, firmly, I will firmly suggest to many of you ladies, you found, the, you found the man of your dreams in your lifetime. Oh, you did. You found him. The problem was you wasn't the woman of his. He was the man of your dreams. You found him. You didn't know what to do with him when you got him. You didn't know what to do to encourage that man. You didn't know what to do to keep that man focused. Why? Because that is part of your job. That's what your help meet. Your help meet. Even the Bible said it wasn't good for a man to be alone. So if he finds himself with you, you have a job to do at that point, ladies. The first job you have is to submit yourself and to allow that man to lead. But what I find to my sad regret today is that the modern woman wants a man to lead, but she's unwilling to be led. And this is the problem. This is the breakdown of the family structure. This is the breakdown of the family structure. The family structure is so broken today most families, black families in particular, all based on the same narrative. I mean, look at our women today. Look at our women today. If we would get outside of our feelings and our emotions and our attitudes and all of the BS that we have, just pay attention to what you see today. What, what condition are our women in? Look at the media, look at entertainment, Look at movie actresses. Look at female rap artists. Look at, look at what you see. These are not wives. These are not wives. I know you see that they're not wives. Oh, I know you see that. I know you see that when you walk in your own community that you don't see wives. Oh, I know you see this. I know you see it at your job with the women that you work with. I know you see that you don't see wives. I know that you see this when you walk up and down your sidewalks in your downtown areas, whatever city you live in. I know you see that there are no wives. These are not wives. The way they carry themselves, the conversations that they're having. I know that you can see that these are not quality women that a quality man should select. This is not hard to see. So again, like I'm not, I don't support the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, pump and dump? No, I don't support the pump and dump, but I understand it. I don't support the smash and grab, but I understand it. I don't support the catch and release, but I understand it. I don't support these things, but I understand it. Because what do you have to choose from? When the average, the modern woman wants a man to lead, yet she's unwilling to be led. 
based on the narrative, based on the mindset, based on the condition of what women portray themselves to be today in modern day time. These again are not wives. These are not wives. What are they? I don't know. I don't know. Many call them 304s. Many call them thoughts. Many call them jump offs. So many different names that are being given to the modern woman. But you don't hear modern women being called wives. Why? 85% of all marriages that take place in this country are dissolved by women. 85%. And another 85% are calling off engagements even after they're engaged prior to becoming married. I talked about this in previous streams. What is, what is a good man? who's worth his own salt, what is a good man to do? What does he have to choose from? What is there to choose from in what's available? So many attractive young ladies, so many attractive sisters. I mean, physically, whoa, I mean, wow. Knock you down, knock you down beautiful until you have the first conversation once you have the first conversation you'll find out that the beauty didn't mean a thing whole lot of beauty on the outside a whole lot of nothing on the inside and therein lies the problem right there how can you lead somebody like that you can't because the whole lot of nothing that's on the inside has a whole lot to do with the traditional wife there's nothing there but there's a whole lot of the modern narrative that's there that has nothing to do with being a wife and it has nothing to do with being submissive to a husband or a man at all the idea and the narrative and the lines of what's right and wrong as it relates to relationship has been blurred so badly to the point most the modern women don't know the difference between the two don't know the difference between the two. Again, I said the pendulum swings in both directions. But here's the thing. If men are to take accountability for themselves and where we fall short, then ladies, why is it a problem for you to take accountability to where you fall short? Why is that a problem? Men have always had to pay the price for falling short. That has never gone unnoticed. When a man falls short, it has always been noticed. It has always been magnified. I mean, for many, many, many years, we've had to endure the criticism of ourselves falling short. And men have done that. We've taken the criticism. We've acknowledged the criticism. And many of us have made the attempts to change and become better for you. But have you been able, have you even been willing to take the criticism that has come to you in regards to your behavior, your attitude, how you conduct yourself, how do you dress, how you present yourself to the general public? Have you been able to take the same criticism and then make the necessary changes as a result of that same criticism and then be presented to a man qualified to be his wife? Have you been willing to do that? Have you done that? Or have you fought against every talking point, every conversation like this? Have you fought against it? Have you gotten yourself emotionally upset at hearing it? Who do he think he is? Who does this guy think he is? You know? Oh, he's a hypocrite. He's this, he's that. You know, the sign language, shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. Have you ever taken the position of saying, you know, maybe I should just remove my emotions. Maybe I should just remove my feelings and actually listen. Listen to understand instead of listening to respond because there is a difference between the two. There's a way of listening to simply respond and then there's a way of listening to understand. And then you have to ask yourself the question, which listening have I used the most? 
Which listening have I used the most? The listening to respond or the listening to understand? So you say, well, Charles, what should I be trying to understand? You should be trying to understand what it is your role says. What is your role? We have one and it's a hard role. It's hard to be a man. I promise you that. It's hard to be a real man. Oh, it ain't hard to be pookie. It ain't hard to be nug nug. And it certainly is not hard to be killer Mike. No, it's not hard. It's hard to be a real man though. Because a real man is devoid of excuses. A real man doesn't have the luxury of an excuse. A real man doesn't even have the luxury of saying he's tired. A real man does not have the luxury at all. But today, when you find yourself in the presence of one that's real, have you ever fought tooth and nail to become a real woman for the man that you have in your presence, who in fact may be a real man so that he can lead because this is who you want. You want a man to lead, but are you willing to be led? That is the question. That is the question. That is the question. That's a queen. That's a queen. Not what they say on TV, not what they say on the news, not what they say in the rap songs, not what they say on the movies. I'm a queen. I'm a... No, you're not. No, you're not. No woman is a queen unless she has a king. You can't become a queen simply by you saying it. That's not a title you could just take on to yourself. No, no. A whole lot of queens are not queens at all. They're jump offs, 304s, one night stands, or somebody running after another man's pocket. They're not wives at all. And that's what would make you a queen. That the, in the fact that you have a king and that you are submissive to that king that you are supportive of that king, that you are in a position where you are finally getting on a man's program, that is a queen. That's a queen, that's a true queen. A queen simply by title means nothing because most women that find themselves taking on that title do not qualify for the title itself. And you don't have to listen to me. All you have to do is watch the women that take the title and watch their behavior, watch their actions, watch how they dress, watch how they talk, watch how they think. Pay attention to what they say. And you'll see that you're not looking at a queen at all. You'll find themselves alone by themselves. And there's no man by them that they are even willing to lead or that under any leadership that they're under. They're not under any man's leadership. So how are you a queen? How are you a queen, ladies? and you're not under any king's leadership. I would love for you to explain that one to me. How are you a queen and you're not under any king's leadership? How? How are you a queen? By title? That's not gonna work. By title? You're a queen, why? Today, most women think they're a queen because they got a BBL. Because they got, uh, you know, implants. Or because they got long eyelashes and long fingernails and a whole bunch of hair on their head, you know. Uh, they got their own car. They got their own home. They have a significant income. And they'll call themselves a queen based on that alone. Forgetting the fact that there is no such thing as a, king, a queen without a king. Most queens who call themselves queens are single as French toast. Single as French toast. They're by themselves, but they're queens. How? How? How does that work? It doesn't work. The modern woman today wants a man, a provider male, to provide finances, but not to provide wisdom. They want to, they want to provide a male to provide guidance. They want to provide a male to provide a lot of things, 
yet they're unwilling to be led. They want them to lead, and yet they're unwilling to be led. This is what we're looking at today. This is what we're looking at today. This narrative can be turned around. How can it be turned around? It can be turned around simply by, like I've always said, and I will continue to always say, asking men what it is that they want. From the beginning, ladies, from the beginning, from the beginning, when you're having the date, ask the right questions. Ask the right questions when you're dating. Because I already said in previous streams what dating means. Dating just means simply means sex. Nobody, no man is taking you on a date because he wants to get to know you. I'm just gonna let you know that. I'm just keeping a hundred. I'm just keeping it one thousand with you. There's no man taking you on a date because he wants to get to know you. No, he's not. That's not why he's taking you on a date. I know you thought. I know you thought that, but that's not why he's taking you on a date. He's taking you on a date because he wants to sleep with you. That's why he's taking you on a date. So since you know that, and I'm giving you a cheat code right now. Ask the right questions while you're on that date. Ask the right questions while you're on that date. So you'll find out where his mindset is. You'll know whether he's marriage material, whether he's a man who's marriage minded. Ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. Don't just go on a date. Don't just go on a date. Don't just let him spend his money and buy you something to eat. Ladies, ask the right questions while you're on that date. Don't just get caught up and in, infatuated over a few dates, some soft music and a nice conversation, and all of a sudden now you're married to the individual, but you never ask them the right questions. Ladies, now you find yourself pregnant. You never ask the right questions. You never ask them the right questions. First questions, if you find yourself pregnant, did you ever ask him, did he want children? Did you ever have that conversation with him? Did you ever have the right, did you ever have that conversation with him? Again, like I said, the pendulum swings in both directions. So, is he at fault for having sex with you unprotected? Yes, he's at fault, no doubt. That's why I said the pendulum swings in both directions, but you also are in charge of your body. You gave access to your body and you have control over childbirth. Did you ask the right questions while you were dating? You want a man to lead. That's the objective. Am I correct? Ladies, am I correct? This is what you want. Now, if you just simply want a one night stand, okay, that's something different. This conversation, this talking point, and this stream is not for you. But if you're looking for real outcomes, when you date, what are you looking for? You're looking and hoping that that date, that individual, that man that's sitting in front of you is the man of your what? Dreams. <laughs> You hoping he's the man of your dreams, right? Well, he could easily end up being the man of your nightmares or you could end up being the man of his, the woman of his nightmare. If you don't ask the right questions, ask him the questions, but you have to make sure that you have the mindset of a wife. Are you wife material? See, a wife will, answer, will ask the right questions. She'll ask, would you like to have children? Are you, have you ever found yourself interested in having children? She'll ask that question. She'll wait for his response. And then she'll, she'll also say to him that I'm looking to have children. I want to be married. I want a husband. And I'm going to tell you right now, ladies, 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 listen to me. If you ask that question, oh, you're going to find out who's, you're going to find out who's Pookie. You're going to find out who's Nug Nug, and you're going to find out who's Killer Mike. You're going to find out who's sitting in front of you if you ask the right questions. Oh, I guarantee you that. Put it to the test. Stop putting yourself in bad positions by not asking the right questions. See, because I know you want a man to lead. But if you keep listening to everything else and everybody else, you're going to be an individual like most, unwilling to be led. And you're going to find yourself in bad situations, resulting in bad outcomes. I hope that this stream helped some of you ladies. And I hope it helped many of you brothers who hear the stream. 
I hope so. Because guess what? Both of us, I mean, men and women, both of us, we have a lot of work to do to get ourselves up to speed, to qualify for the things that we both say we want. Men and women, we want a good woman. Well, brothers, get your shit together, man. Oh, yeah. Get your stuff together, too, bro. You want a woman, you want a good wife, get yourself together, man. Ladies, you want a good man, get yourself together. Learn how to get on a man's program. Help him meet his objectives. That's what you are, a help meet. Not a help mate, no. You're not an object of pleasure, although he should find pleasure in you. You're not an object of pleasure. No, you're not simply made for sex. You're not an object of pleasure, but he should find pleasure in you. But can he find pleasure all across the board? Are you, do you go full circle in that pleasure that he receives from you? Will you allow that man to lead you? Simply because you want a man to lead, but are you willing to be led? Or are you, or are you only willing to give him the physical pleasure that he finds in this modern woman? Because this is where we are. This is where we are. And uh, we want to turn this trajectory around. And it can be turned around. It can be turned around. But again, it happens on both sides. The pendulum swings in both directions. With that being said, I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. Shout out to all of you that got on the stream tonight. Thank you for your support. Support the stream if you would love to support the stream. If you like the content, you want to keep this going, you can support the stream at Cash App, capital dollar sign, capital C, capital G, 4033. Again, I thank you for your support. And uh, again, shout out to all of you that got on the stream. I can't see your faces. Some of you are making comments. <laughs> I want to give you a shout out, but I don't, you know, one thing about StreamYard, it won't show me your names. <laughs> Uh, somebody said truth is truth. Let's talk about it. Don't get angry at the messenger. <laughs> if you could put your name so I can see who you were that made that comment. Uh, thank you for that comment. Somebody said that's real talk. A woman is not a queen without a king by her side. Truth, truth. I am watching with you late. I'm still here with you. Thank you for whoever you are that came on the stream. I thank you for your support. <laughs> shout out to mom margaret that's my mom guys i, I think i said that in another stream margaret burns that's my mother shout out to you mom thank you for getting on the stream tonight <laughs> love you <laughs> and uh yeah so with that being said guys I, I appreciate you uh charge everything that i've ever said in all my streams um to my heart because I really, really want to see better outcomes for all of us. And because, uh, again, none of us are perfect, man. We're all working to get to where we want to be uh, emotionally, psychologically. We've all been through things, man. We've all been through traumas. We've all been through setbacks, all of which have made us who we find ourselves to be today. And we're fighting against those things, man. We're fighting against those things that hold us back in our minds and in our emotions and that keep us separated as as a couple you know that's why our that's why our communities are so fragmented you can't find wholesome serious relationships anymore they just simply don't exist it looks as though they don't exist and uh and there's so many other relationships that the society is trying to push and support and i don't have to say what those things are you know what they are i don't have to say it they're pushing the narrative all over television. They're pushing it all over the media. They're pushing these relationships. But they're not pushing wholesome male and female relationships. And they're certainly not pushing families. So for those of us that still do desire it today, those of us that still desire real relationships, it's going to take us making the change, man. It's going to take us making those changes. Understand you're outnumbered. But if you calculate numbers, 
then you'll miscalculate. So again, with that being said, I think all of you get on the stream tonight. I'm your host, Charles Chambers. it has been another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. And uh, with that being said, we are out. I love you, family. Thank you all for your support. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Again, shout out to all of you. Have a great night, folks. <laughs>